Hello everyone and welcome. Sit back, relax, make a cup of tea or whatever you like to drink and get ready for new stories from Yellow Cat. Send your own favorite stories in the comments below and maybe they'll be in our new video. So subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed yet. Let's get started. Folks who quit their jobs on day one, what happened? While I was waiting to find employment in my field after graduating from university, I worked one shift in the kitchen of a chain restaurant. When the dinner rush began, everyone had finished their shifts except for the head chef and me, so it was just the head chef and me on the pass. I had no training and had no idea how to prepare the menu items. The head chef became more and more irate with me as a result of my mistakes and the slow service. I was still learning the ropes. He became more agitated, so I called him out and told him that he actually needed to show me what to do if he wanted everything to go well, to which he replied angrily. The final straw was whilst we were cleaning the kitchen, he kept trying to show me explicit photos of his ex-girlfriend and then asking to see photos of my girlfriend, to which I refused. For two hours straight, he kept insisting on showing me the photos. I think he thought if he showed me pictures of his ex, then I would feel like I had to show pictures of mine to him. The restaurant manager saw me leaving and kept asking how I was feeling, but I felt really uncomfortable. It gave me the impression that he was aware of how awful the kitchen was, either unable to control it or content to let it continue and hoped he had found someone else who would accept it as it was. I had three other shifts that week, but before I even got home, I decided I was not going back. For that one shift, I didn't even attempt to get paid by them. As I was writing this, I discovered that the restaurant had closed a year ago on a permanent basis. Doesn't surprise me. I was brought in to tile a business area. I arrived one time at 8 a.m. I was meant to meet the guy who hired me at the job site at 8 in the morning. He doesn't pick up when I call the one number I have for him. I therefore began talking to other employees to find out if this was typical or if I ought to contact their office, etc. They had no idea at all about which area received which tile. Since I had recently been hired, of course, I had no idea. I began to unload tools, etc. When 9am arrives, there's still no reply. In order to keep myself occupied, I start assisting other workers in moving building supplies because I was unable to begin working until I received instructions on the types of tiles to be installed and their locations and schematics. By 10 a.m., this guy has still not responded. When he finally calls me back, it's almost 11 a.m., he says he's on his way. He enters the room with a strong beer odor. He was obviously still intoxicated from the previous evening. <laughs> I don't know, maybe he'd even continued to drink that morning. I gently express my displeasure with its lack of response and punctuality, not to mention that he has a strong alcohol odor and that I don't work for men who break their promises. Without a doubt, I won't work for anyone who arrives at work intoxicated. Naturally, he adopts an air of superiority and acts as though I'm the issue here. I then inform him that I'll be getting in touch with the owners to inform them of the predicament he caused. He literally tries to act like he's going to attack me when he gets upset. Compared to him, I am a very big man. I just shrug it off and load up my truck with my tools. He follows me outside to swear in front of his own clients in the parking lot. That afternoon, I received a call from the owner informing me that he had been fired and had even been arrested for refusing to leave the job site. I was shocked that this man even had a job. I informed the owners that I would no longer be working for his business. I believed that they had terrible instincts about possible manager hires and other positions since they hired that guy. They wanted me to take that guy's job, but I declined because I own a small business and was only taking on some extra work. I manage my own jobs most of the time, and I only hire trustworthy men when necessary. Basically, I left the project manager on day one because he was a drunken liar who wanted to fight with me. Many moons ago, I spent one day working at a cannery. I was employed at the production line for spam. I was required to transfer this thick, meaty, sloppy muck into cooking pots the size of supermarket spam cans by hand from a massive vat. This production line had employed the supervisor for 17 years. 
He was such a loser. He insisted that I should consider myself lucky to be employed in his division, and that it was an honor not to begin with floor sweeping for the first few years. He also told me that I could become a supervisor like him someday if I worked hard and quickly and became a company man. Seventeen years in a factory and one promotion from S-Kicker to supervisor of S-Kickers? What a W. There, you shooting for the moon, you tosspot. And what an a-hole. Wow. He would stop the conveyor when I missed a pot and come yell at me. Then he would keep speeding up the belt so that I couldn't scoop it in quickly enough. This continued for four hours with yelling every two to three minutes. When he finally made personal insults to me in front of everyone, I pushed him in as he leaned over the vat a soupy, cold, yucky slop to demonstrate how to do it quickly. I just strolled back to the locker room slash change area after that. I'm gonna get fired anyway, so I'll resign effective immediately before anyone says anything. So I quit, I said in response to the question, why are you going to get fired? I had to pass personal. The girl asked at the private desk. I said grinning, and you'll hear about it shortly, as I entered the changing area. I didn't hear anything from anyone, but I did get paid $90 for four hours, which was a decent amount in the 1980s. Good pay for a crappy job with a loser boss that smells like off pork. In college, I worked as a dishwasher at a lovely Chinese-Asian restaurant. They tacked up notices on the kitchen walls with little daubs of bright red sweet and sour sauce. Everywhere, there were tiny, soiled, dark red smudges. But that was just a little disgusting. The owner was of Korean ethnicity, but he was raised in Kansas City. The majority of the kitchen crew was of Chinese ethnicity and culture, and the majority did not speak much English. I was just called boy by them. The owner also did. The final straw of my one-shift employment came when we were closing, and a staff member handed me a plastic bucket that I had previously used for mopping and said, Boy, clean this! After quickly rinsing it to remove the majority of the gray gunk from the bottom, I returned to him. You want us to store vegetables in that? The owner yelled as she cuffed me firmly in the back of the head. It's still very dirty. I replied, no, I never expected it'd be used for anything other than mopping. He replied slowly and thoughtfully, that's why he told you to wash it. You wash a bucket when someone tells you to, boy. I told him he should be surprised if I didn't report him to the Department of Health, which I did, took off my apron, dropped it where I was standing, and left. My complaint led to the health board placing them on probation, and a few months later, they permanently closed. It was operating for at least 10 years. Though, I'm not sure if I had anything to do with it closing, I was relieved when it did. What's your worst HOA homeowners association encounter you've had? I once played litigator for an issue between a neighbor and my HOA. By following the proper legal procedures, the neighbor's property was separated from the HOA. Nevertheless, the HOA property was the only way to enter this garage. Issue that was brought up was her walking her dog out of her garage onto HOA property. Things quickly got out of hand after she received a notice in the mail. My neighbor and the HOA vice president got into a heated argument that resulted in my neighbor yelling and crying until she was able to prove that she had a right-of-way access to the property within reason as part of the seceding. The neighbor continued to be followed by the HOA lady, who continued to do so whenever she ventured onto HOA property, but only from a safe distance. My father-in-law saw something odd about the letter she was sending my neighbor. There was no postage stamp or other marking, and that's when I was finally able to intervene. It's a crime that she had been putting them straight into my neighbor's mailbox. Needless to say, they left her alone after threatening to press charges. Another tale a few years ago about my HOA. I had three cars at the time, and each of my three roommates had one for no apparent reason. That meant that, excluding my friends' and girlfriends' cars, we always had six cars parked at our house. The HOA wrote us some vehement letters regarding excessive street parking, which we now realize may have also been a way to get around the postal service. After they began sending me letters with fines and final notice to pay, I eventually threatened to take legal action. I went through the bylaws cover to cover and found no mention of their authority to impose fines. 
lived in a townhome-style rental under an HOA. We got recycling bins from the city that we could take to the collection center ourselves because the HOA opted out of recycling pickup. We put the bins on our back porch, which faced the tree line, no other units. So one day, we get a letter that they were visible refuse and couldn't be back there. They took pictures of our bins and highlighted them, then also circled them in pen included in the letter imminent fines and threatened our deposit if we didn't rectify this immediately. Well, I'm a D and so is my roommate. We look through the lease and HOA bylaws and turns out the bins fit the dimension requirements for planter slash container gardens. So we drilled holes in them, planted some tomato seedlings and put them on the front porch. I knew of a man who invested in a very upscale neighborhood where the majority of the homes were custom half million dollar homes with breathtaking views. There were ends on the HOA board. The paint colors had to adhere to a strict Southwest design color scheme, which included top, beige, teal, pink, gray, and so on. Only paint colors from this palette could be used to paint your house. The plan was to paint your house a neutral hue, like sandy beige, and then add a pop of bright teal or pink to the woodwork that surrounded your windows as an accent. Yes, it appears as repulsive as it does. The homeowner painted his house off-white with beige trim shortly after the rule went into effect, rather than using the color scheme that the board recommended because the work had already been contracted out before the decision was made. It was almost the same color as any typical stucco house. Enter a particularly nasty dispute started by the neighbor next door who was simultaneously trying to sell their house and serve it on the board. They found themselves in court. The homeowner lost the lawsuit despite owning five other properties and being extremely wealthy. You now understand that this was a large house with no trees to block it, situated on a one-acre lot on a low hill in the desert. It was visible for about half a mile in all directions. Due to its size and location, it was the largest area in the neighborhood and the first thing you saw when you entered a subdivision. A 10 foot tall stucco over block fence encircled the entire backyard and the house had an RV parking garage built into it. We're discussing a very large building with a large footprint. This guy lost it and painted his entire house pink, including the trim, walls, gutters, fences, and every other surface. I'm talking vivid Pepto-Bismol pink. Subsequently, he engaged a contractor to create a stamped concrete driveway that was three cars wide and matched the pink brick pattern. He then had pink rock landscaped around the house. The terracotta tile on the roof was already tinted pink. His neighbor could not sell his house for five years. I'm not sure how long it went on after that. They changed the HOA laws, but the pink home was grandfathered in. The rich owner locked up the house and left it sitting empty and moved somewhere else and only used it as a vacation home. I helped my parents organize a hostile takeover of our HOA. Nobody liked our HOA's chair because she was such a D. With no other plans and two college-age children and a husband who worked as a petroleum engineer, she was an empty nester who would walk the neighborhood every day with a copy of the HOA handbook, measuring grass with a ruler, peering into people's yards with binoculars, and so on. She would demand that anything wrong with your property be fixed within the next 24 hours, failing which you would be fined. Ten years as the HOA chair, she consistently scheduled election meetings on days that would be difficult for the opposition to attend, such as PTA meetings, sporting events, the first and last days of school, etc. Obviously, the neighborhood's retirees didn't give an S because they had time to conform to the standards, but parents with at-home children really detested her. This ensured that she would never be defeated. The only ways my parents and I, who were 17 at the time, could find to get rid of her were to A, miss those significant school-slash-social events, only to have him re-elected at the next one where we couldn't find a majority to show up, B, undermine her support from the retirees, or C, make her lash out and lose support. Every day during our consecutive gym and lunch periods, my best friend and I would drive home and spy on her to figure out her routine because her house was perched on a hill overlooking most of the other houses. 
After two weeks, we realized she was out of sight of her house for six and a half minutes during her daily examinations. So every day, one of us would keep an eye on her from my friend's house while the other effed with her property, i.e. spreading an S-load of fertilizer, cutting her bushes into shapes that could be construed as inappropriate if you were looking at it from far away, and setting her garage alarm to go off very loudly at 3 a.m. Thus, over the course of four weeks, her elderly neighbors began to become extremely irate with her for the barely noticeable D's in her bushes, the increased frequency of her lawn mowing, or the sound of her alarm clock at night. This started to get on her nerves gradually, so one day, we hired a gardener to visit her home right as her ritual was about to conclude. She thinks she found the person who's been effing with her, so she goes ballistic and winds up punching the guy in the face. The gardener files charges, and she pleads out for battery and does community service. However, a stipulation in our HOA states that no person with a criminal record may be on the board, so she lost her position. And the subdivision lived happily ever after under less strict HOA guidance. The end. Thank you for subscribing to likes and comments. We're very happy to see you all in the comments too. Thanks for your support.